A lot of people like to compare modern day gravel bikes with 90s mountain bikes. So I wanted to get my hands on one to test. So I went on eBay, typed in 90s mountain bike, and this was the first thing to come up. And I think I lucked out. Inside this box is something very cool. It's not a trick. <laughs> this is a 90s Scott Sawtooth, and it cost me 150 pounds. Not a lightweight racing machine, but looking good so far. Little front rack, original Scott saddle. 26 inch wheels, bearings are not fantastic. Brand new tires, brand new tubes. So this is a Scott Sawtooth from the early 90s. As I said, I found it on eBay. It was actually 155 pounds secondhand. Well used, but has been serviced. There's been a kind of rebuild on it, but with some used parts and some new parts. It's a 17 inch frame, so should fit me. And it's kind of a mid range mountain bike, rigid fork from the early 90s. Or as some would uh, call it these days, a gravel bike. It is one of the coolest paint jobs that I've ever seen on a bike, so I'm very happy to own it. I don't think it's gonna work straight out the box. There's gonna be some problems because it's old. I've already spotted there's a BioPace chain ring on it as well, which uh, was one of the biggest tech fails in the history of cycling. I'm gonna attempt to put it together and see what kind of condition this is in. Now, I'm guessing for 150 quid, there's gonna be problems. Not everything is gonna work completely smoothly, but so far, kind of is working. Frame all looks in good nick. There's no cracks or real big bits of damage, bit the paint's flaking off, but it is an old bike. Definitely a new BB. Cassette has definitely been used. Jockey wheel's looking good nick though. Rear brake needs a lot more tension if I actually wanted to stop the bike. Working. Straight in the bit. All the cables need more tension here. Front mech, I think the shifter's broken. Doesn't seem to click and it's not a friction shifter, so it should have a click, but it doesn't work. Luckily, there's three chain rings and the middle one is a middle size. So another bit of a problem, the threads in the right-hand crank arm are completely stripped. I don't know if the guy who sold it to me actually put these pedals on to test them. Uh, and must have got this crank from like a scrap heap. But there is a couple of things you can do to try and fix this, which I've been successful with, which was threading this pedal in, in the back of the crank arm to re-tap it. I don't have the proper tool to re-cut a thread, but with old parts like this and pedals you don't really care about, it's worth putting it in the other way, seeing if that drives out all of the nasty bits of metal and stuff from the person who stripped it before. And lo and behold, it has done the trick. It's a little bit stiff, but in straight. I have removed the uh, the cool yellow grips because a bit manky and kind of smell a bit funny. I don't really want to be touching like 30 years of people's sweat every time I ride the bike. So what's with this weird chain ring? Or three chain rings? They're all BioPace by Shimano, which came out in the 80s and stopped being made fairly quickly in the 90s because it gave people knee pain. It's an oval chain ring, but kind of the opposite orientation to how a modern Q ring or one of those black ink or osymmetric oval rings. So basically people had a lot of problems with them. They're not actually that oval. So I think I'm gonna ride them and see if I'm okay. My dad's mountain bike actually had three of these on before and I never had a problem riding that, but I was never doing really long rides on it. In any case, it's a piece of history. It's a shame it probably does affect the shifting negatively as well. And the front mech is already not the best functioning, so maybe I'll have to switch out the cranks for some round ones if I'm gonna be using this bike uh, to ride to work and back on. I didn't just buy this bike to ride to work and back on. I wanted it as a bit of a test machine to use for different videos on this channel. One thing I'd really like to test in particular is this bike against a modern day gravel bike, but it needs to be fair. I'm not gonna put it against the very premium tuned Addict Gravel. But you know, people love to put in the comment section how capable 90s mountain bikes are. We will see. And if it all goes wrong, at least it looks cool as f I did think this was a new chain on second inspection. It is not, but I did check it for wear and it's not worn at all. The thing with buying bikes like this on eBay is that it is always a risk. There's a little bit of trust involved. You have to go via the feedback, the photos and 
previous transactions, these guys actually left a link to an Instagram feed where they take bikes that are complete beaters. There was actually a photo of this one and then fix them up and make them rideable. So it was enough to trust that this would be functional and if there was a problem, they'd probably take it back because their reputation is on the line. If you're not that mechanically minded and you haven't been riding bikes for a long time, it would be quite difficult knowing what parts are okay and what needs to be replaced. I had a hard time getting that pedal installed. If that had been anybody, they wouldn't have known the little trick to wind it in the back and you would have issues. It is always a risk. If you find something that you really do want and the price is good, then just make sure you have a bike shop that maybe work on secondhand bikes already lined up. Potentially you know them already and you have somewhere to go just to make sure it's safe to ride. One really positive thing about riding a bike like this is that all of the parts, the spare parts are easy to find. 26 inch wheel, probably the most common still in the world. Although 650B and 700C, what you'd find on a road bike are increasingly more common as well. But all of the little bits like the cables and the brake pads, and they're just easy to find. Most bike shops will have them. Bio pace feels weird. Other than that, it's riding like a dream. 150 quid, can't go wrong. Well, you could go wrong. I think I was lucky. Gear changes are smooth, brakes work. Will I have enough gearing, because I'm just in the middle ring, to get home? Well, without really pushing it? So this bike absolutely rips. Immediate observations are it has the widest Q factor in the world. So how far away your pedals are from each other, like that width is just ridiculous. And I've been doing a lot of mountain biking recently. Mountain bikes have a fairly wide like Q factor anyway, but this is, is next level. It is like a BMX. It's not a disaster because most people can tolerate a wide Q factor, but not a super narrow one. So for people just riding around, pretty good. Definitely not as stable as the gravel bike when you're off road. Now this might be down to the tires a little bit because they're like urban tires, but I have a feeling it's more down to the wheel size. Smaller wheel, the less stuff it's going to roll over and the more harsh it's going to feel. But to be honest, that's actually quite fun. It's like when you take a gravel bike onto the mountain bike trails, you're kind of underbiked and everything's a little bit more twitchy and uh, yeah, you've got to pay attention. So again, not really a bad thing. That is what I was expecting and yeah. I'm very happy. The handlebars, I wish they were a little bit wider. These are, oh, I haven't measured them, but significantly narrower than what people would ride on mountain bikes these days. I guess you're in a more narrow position if you're just gonna be using it for gravel, so cool. But uh, I will be putting on some wider bars, maybe a different stem on here, cause it's like super upright um, and see how that goes. So what is the conclusion there? That bike is 1 million times better than a new one bought from eBay for about the same price. Regular viewers of this channel will know what I'm referring to, but not every secondhand bike will be that good or need as little work. You do have to be careful when buying secondhand, but at that kind of price, it's not the end of the world if you have to spend a bit of money on it afterwards to get it rolling. I hope you enjoyed a quick look at this bike. If you enjoyed this video, there is a playlist on my channel called Nice Bikes, full of other nice bikes. Let me know what you think of this in the comment section down below and see you guys soon.